this right side picture showing the base part. So we are looking at the base. So where my cursor is, this is the place where we keep the soap and then we pick this one and then close the lid. So that's how the items are arranged. So as a taxonomist, what we will do, we will look at this, uh, this small holes and then E there are uh, till date we have almost we know some 40 to 50,000 types of datum across the globe. Uh, 40 to 50,000 type uh, datums are there. Uh, 50,000 type, uh, uh, types of datums are there. We, a taxonomist call this as a species. Like species A is different from species B and like that so on. Like how you call tomato is different from uh, brinjal and that is different from cauliflower and then that's from a potato like that. So diatomist also, uh, diatom taxonomist, they classify all these uh, different diatoms under the microscope by looking at this siliceous structure. So <clears throat> uh, where we find diatoms? On the left, you are seeing this stones and there are tadpoles here. And then you see this brown color growth on these stones in the stream. This picture is from a stream. So you see all these hair-like things, like brown, like uh, it's a, these, all this growth are a mixture of multiple microorganisms, starting from bacteria, fungi, uh, algae, and then small microinvertebrates. So all these are there. So diatoms are the, the predominant uh, group in this um, biofilm. So you can see this uh, tadpoles are uh, eating this uh, biofilm. They are feeding major, majorly on the uh, diatom because this is composed mainly of diatoms. And this is another picture where this uh, a wooden log is immersed in a water in a lake where we can see this uh, brown growth, which is nothing but like predominantly diatoms. So where we find diatoms, fresh water. So you can find diatoms in, in a lake, in a river, in a small pond, and even in your uh, overhead tanks. If you go to your overhead tank, if there is a leakage of water from the tap, where the pipe where it brings the water down, you will see a brown growth. You can just scratch it with a spoon and you, you look under the microscope, you will see diatoms in it. And then you will also see diatoms in salt water, like brackish water. Like if you go near uh, any estuarine part in both East Coast and West Coast, you will see diatoms there. And then even in salt water, in deep marine also, you will see diatoms. So diatoms are in these places, you will see many other aquatic organisms like fishes you will see, and then aquatic birds you will see. But diatoms are also extremophile extremophile means like they live in they love extreme condition also there are some diatom which they live inside the ice so if you if we go to the uh, some of the glaciers in himalaya inside the ice we can see a brown or like uh, uh, slightly uh, golden brown color pigments which is uh, which are diatom and if you on the other hand if you go to some of the india's uh, famous hot springs either in Himalayas or in Western Ghats, the water will be 70 degree, 80 degree Celsius. There also you will find uh, diatoms. But the only difference is the diatom you find in one environment, you don't find in other environment. They are restricted to only particular environment. So freshwater diatom you don't see in saltwater diatom or inside the ice or in a hot spring. Likewise, uh, hot, wa hot water uh, spring only cater a certain set of diatoms. So these diatoms live only in highly like uh, uh, temperature, uh, high temperature waters. Uh, so Karthik, lots of comments have been coming. Sure. So I'll tell one comment and Sneha will give you the questions. Dhruti Aradhya says, mind blowing. The diversity in structure and habitat is just mind blowing. So Snehal, there have been lots of questions. Yes. You can take them. Yeah. Yes. So one question that came up with how are diatoms formed? Hmm. Okay. <clears throat> so diatoms are uh, 
microscopic aquatic organisms so they have mechanism a set of you know they have a, a recipe to extract silica from the environment and then make the shells their cell wall so why diatom started using uh, silica the theory is uh, long long ago maybe uh, during the uh, before during the dinos before dinosaurs time so the 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 that the organism which was before diatom they did not have a silica cell wall so they, they were undergoing lot of uh, infection from the other organisms in the sediments so they decided to make a small uh, protective uh, gear around them so that's how they started using the silica uh, from the environment and started making the silica cell wall so uh, this is how uh, uh, so this <clears throat> the entire process of taking silica and then putting in the cell wall is a, a, a the process in in great detail like you know how they make the cell walls and all those things okay so arya has a question arya asks what is the life span of diatom okay some diatom lives for few minutes and some live for years some for like decades like you know uh, in the frozen lakes some diatoms they will just go to a dormant stage and they will be waiting for a favorable condition where the temperature is high where the, the ice turn into water so they will so uh, but usually uh, there is no uh, death for diatoms you know why it is if we go back to our previous slide sorry uh this um, lid and base is there right so diatom have two kinds of reproduction i i didn't uh, put that, that reproduction part uh so uh one is sexual reproduction another one is asexual reproduction what happen asexual reproduction in diatom it's very peculiar so this lid and base will come apart the lid will make a base and the base will make a lid for it so the mother diatom is of this size when they divide apart and that one daughter will be of same size as mother and another one become slightly smaller and then this uh, size uh, this uh, process continues and this pro so by the result of this process we have a diatom of this size to this size so this is called as di size diminution series so basically the lid will make another one diatom atom and the base will make another one atom and again they divide and then go on go on and then when they goes to a small stage then again they reproduce by uh, uh, sexual reproduction again they the zygote will achieve the the longest cell for the that particular species okay. so this yeah. so kartik another question does seaweed have chlorophyll yes seaweed have chlorophyll and ahana and mihika ask a question are the items seen with the naked eye or do we need a microscope we need a microscope okay. we need a microscope to see a diatom so partially yeah sure we can uh, i just remember that it now like uh, we can even you we can see diatom using a full scope also okay okay yes yes full scope is like a, a simple microscope we use full scope in field to check whether our samples have diatom or not so yeah. full scope also we can use to uh, look at a diatoms okay so all right we can go on i think yes okay so <clears throat> we will uh, we will find diatom basically this uh, four characters like fresh water salt water ice hard springs everything confirms we just need little moisture so we will find item in it even the the flower the flower pot in your balcony <clears throat> uh, in your garden it will also have moisture so if you take that soil we we can extract diatom from that uh, uh, soil also so <clears throat> this is a, a, a school kids project from uh, uh, kids they 
tapped the uh, uh, turtles and then they found uh, diatoms growing on the, uh, the back of the uh, the turtles <coughs> so diatom just need some uh, moisture so they will grow anywhere so coming back to turtle uh, so these turtles are home to some of the diatoms which are found nowhere else except in the in the back of the turtle so they are that specific to the environment <coughs> so they they grow they for a particular species only particular set of environment only uh, will be a favorable so they don't grow elsewhere so what uh, we do so we mostly study diatom from fresh water uh, from rivers and streams so we go to a river and we pick a stone like this so you can see a toothbrush so we use a toothbrush for a completely a different purpose than from the normal uh, normally it is used if you see i am just going to play this video uh, if you have a internet connection or anything just let me know i can play it again So we are removing the biofilm <coughs> and then we get this brown uh, liquid. So that's nothing but like dominated by the atoms. Have other thing. If you know uh, in this video, the person who is taking video is taking deep breath. Yes. Because uh, this, they are sampling at like 5,000 sea level. It's uh, almost uh, like few kilometer away from uh, China. It's in okay. the Northern Sikkim region. Okay. And you can also see me after doing that uh, like a four or five time brushing, I get like uh, that, uh, the person with this, all this clothes is me so getting tired because, uh, because of very less oxygen on the high altitude. So, you know, so this is how we collect diatoms. So when we take that the brown uh, suspension which we uh, collected from the stones if we look under the microscope this is what it looks like so there are green algae all these brown dots are diatoms so you can see how they are dominating the entire uh, biofilm on the stone so these are all diatoms Just play it again. Oh yes, so many, absolutely. Wow. Sure, so uh, Karthik, few questions have come. I'll take one of them. Can sure. diatoms grow in the human body or on the human body? Uh, they don't grow on the human body, but like every day we consume a lot of diatoms in okay. from our water. From okay. Our okay. So the question I think everyone is asking is do they're diatoms not pathogenic? They're not pathogenic. Yes. <laughs> yes. I think that's the question everyone <laughs> wants to know. Yes. Because so, when looking at this um, yeah. uh, this uh, shape and size, no, everybody has some kind of like, you know. If it goes inside me, it's going to... Yeah, yeah. Something like so it looks like a parasite, but it's not pathogenic. <laughs> right. Another yes, thing, um, uh, Karthik, they are, Shlok asks, uh, what is the use of diatoms? I mean, why are they there in the environment? You know? Okay. You Just hang something? on there. Okay, okay. For another 15, 20 minutes. Okay, yeah. okay. All right. So, I'm... Um, um, Okay, if there is no more question, can we proceed further? Yeah, sure, sure. So on the right side, you I have put a small picture of a you know a imaginative forest ecosystem. So there are so many trees and so many animals, and then so many microbes, so many plants, everything is there. 
this is a in, invisible forest to our naked eyes this is like yes this is there are you know there are things which they primarily produce and there are some animals which they eat them then some flying some walking some crawling it's a, you know it's a, a, a complete ecosystem which is beyond our understanding starting from these like uh, this uh, chain like structure which is a uh, blue green algae which is also a type of algae and to diatoms and insects and then uh, uh, nymphs of the dragonfly damsel fly and so on so on so it's a, a great a great ecosystem it's a there is a video here okay okay it's uh, okay come it came yeah so this video shows that uh, in this is this video ha- is almost as equal as what we see in discovery channel or uh, national geographic channel like how a carnivore animal run and catch a herbivore as its food right so here we see a zooplankton a microinvertebrate a microscopic animal they go on hunt diatom so they just uh, suck the entire water and filter all the uh, algae so this oval shaped uh, microinvertebrate just going around and then sucking all the uh, algae growing all over the place so what you see everywhere there are different types of algae hmm so when when we get samples our uh, we hate this uh, uh, this micro invertebrates because uh, they eat the diatoms so we will be trying to isolate some particular diatom to uh, grow it in a culture before we pick they pick and they just eat and like do that um, um, kind of thing in front of our own eyes Oh it's like a burger for the okay. for the zoo plankton yeah yeah exactly very juicy oily burger with lot of things around it yeah <laughs> so when, uh so uh, as i mentioned uh, the first part of the talk what is something very peculiar about atoms they are made up of silica cell wall so uh, we want to see the silica structure to identify a diatom without seeing a silica structure we cannot identify a diatom so what we do we basically cook the diatoms uh, for example um, if you see like if anybody likes here clam soup so we put the clam and we put the water and we put some other soup ingredients and then we boil it so everything get dig- everything get mixed in the water except that the shells of the clam so that's what we are interested so we are interested in looking at the shells so what we do we take the samples and then put it in nitric acid and then we boil them in the lab <coughs> don't do this because nitric acid is very hazardous to uh, handle <coughs> for school projects we do uh, bleach the commercial bleach which we get it in the sh- stores we use that to digest that item and once we burn all the organic leaf litter everything will be just burned with the nitric acid and when we then when we make a slide we will see this beautiful uh, structures of silica so i'll just show you another one we uh, we after uh, in we after boiling we make a permanent slide of uh, in just wait it's getting loaded so what you have seen for <coughs> two three minutes uh, before and what you see will like be completely two different picture because previously we seen diatom plus other organism and diatom is also filled with its uh, internal cell content like chloroplast and other things everything but now you are going to see pure diatom cells only 
so from you can see uh, like you know n number of uh, like literally in every field you will see 20 tabs and in one slide you can take you can reach up to 3000 tabs so the video of um, the question uh, they ask is what yeah. do diatoms eat do they eat silica because we are seeing all these silica shells what do diatoms eat so diatoms are autotrophic they use a light uh -huh. and they uh, take carbon dioxide and they they fix they you they are photosynthetic it don't eat anything yes. like they, correct they, so they, it, they make their uh, own food <clears throat> so uh, as i mentioned before uh, different uh, water bodies have different set of diatoms when we have river different set of diatoms and we have a different set in the ocean there are different set of diatoms in the river only there are uh, if you take the origin of the river usually it will be very clean when it start coming towards the human habitation people start using the uh, rivers like anything they wash the cloth so even this change can be reflected in diatoms so that's why we use diatoms as a environmental indicator diatoms can tell whether it is clean water diatoms can tell whether it is polluted water so to to assess the pollution what we do when we look when we look into the microscope uh, we count there are different species forget about this uh, names we, we count different species and then uh, uh, we put their exact count how many are there every atom have its own preference for a environment some atom love clean water some atom love very dirty water so we make use of them to tell about uh, the environment for example here i have uh, among this is the slide i made and then this is the species uh, list i got after counting say 100 type of diatoms in in the slide then i could classify based on my previous observation i can classify in this particular sample 15% are most current diatom means they can tolerate any kind of pollution so they are like robust and then this 11% are moderately tolerant diatoms that's like you know they can take little bit of pollution but if you do lot and the c class this blue class 73% are sensitive diatom in this particular place i sampled and i got this is the condition so i can confidently say that you know this place is 73% not it's a 73% clean water so this is how we use diatom as a environmental indicator so oh, wow. all all pollution monitoring uh, uh, agencies uh, use diatoms to confirm if there is a pollution in the place so we also use uh, a routine water test but it is better to uh, get information from the organism which are residing in that water than just doing a, a physical or a chemical uh, what test so uh, them are uh, a great environmental indicator so they help us in find the level of pollution if we take this as a river and what are the level of pollution and what kind of pollution also we can tell using diatom whether it is a pollution of uh, industrial wastewater or pollution of agricultural waste or uh, pollution of thermal waste so all those things can be reflected by diatom just by the finding the set of species living there and then with the diatom we can also take clues how to restore our river if in if it is in a polluted condition so <clears throat> when we are trying to do this pollution assessment and all those thing we find many diatoms which are new to science which is not already documented by any researchers so if you see that you know we documented diatom from himalayan region and then uh, western ghats and so many places so uh, we describe um, many new species around 60 new species of diatom we have described from india talked about describing species uh,
the man who brought the the binomial nomenclature he have described around 7000 uh, new plants and in terms of diatoms uh, hp gandhi was from uh, he described 300 of diatom from uh, different part of uh, india particularly so i mentioned about the restoring the river uh, yes if you if you so uh, anybody have any doubt like we can go ahead yes. like we'll so we have can, a small uh, we can yes. stop for questions maybe uh, yes so ahana and meek mehiras can diatoms help in reducing pollution there is a process of bio remediation we can diatoms uh, for survival of diatom diatom requires nutrients which is nitrates and phosphorus uh <clears throat> our our uh, water have are rich in uh, nitrate and phosphates we can use this water to grow diatoms and so we can reduce the uh, we can remove those nutrients from the water okay all right so another question i think uh, maybe a few people have got confused between the tolerant and the sensitive diatom so maybe we can go back to that once exactly one okay so uh in, in this uh, we classify diatom into three group the pink group the yellow group and the blue group the pink group are most tolerant diatoms so uh, can live in a clean water they can live in polluted water also okay so, so they can tolerate in the levels of environmental yeah they are pollution tolerant this is tolerant is with refer to the change in environmental condition which is pollution here and sensitive diatoms they are very very sensitive like you know even if you change uh, the flow they will they will be very unhappy they are like you know fixed you know i want to live in only this flow this ph this conductivity and this nutrient condition so i don't uh, i i live in my own condition like that so we if there are tolerant diatoms are more in our sample they can this uh, this water is polluted because they are rich in pollution tolerant diatom when there are when the sample is rich in sensitive diatom so that means this environment is not changed it is remains in its original condition i mentioned about uh, in the previous slide uh, hp gandhi Uh, hp gandhi worked at uh, uh, part of the western part of india from of gujarat maharashtra and so on so he collected samples uh, from uh, many uh, stream sites in in the present day bombay region so uh, so using his slides we will know what is the past past water condition in 1960 what was the water condition we can tell now so uh, now you focus on the left side only in japan after the uh, second world war their major focus is on improving the economy so they had very uh, uh, they had a uh, lot of industrial productions were going on so there are a lot of waste water generation so all their rivers are uh, very much polluted so if the left left side you see the this is the condition of the river with lot of foams and things like mm -hmm. that and the diatom growing there are were like this kind these are the typical diatoms there are some five six species they can tolerate high level of pollution they found only those diatom same river uh, recently they have restored those rivers so they stopped all the pollution they restored it and then now the diatom community have completely changed to a different set of diatoms so this is the story from japan in case of india in 1960s we had very clean diatoms like 2010 diatoms from the same uh, places in and around bombay but currently all those diatoms are replaced by pollution tolerant diatoms so whatever the condition uh, japanese river were in 1960s and our rivers are in that condition now so 
uh, we here there are two points I want to emphasize. One is using datum to identify the pollution, and the second thing is from this set of studies they move to a clean water datum from tolerant pollution tolerant datum to they went move to sensitive datum. Even if we move, if we have, we, if we change our action towards conservation of our rivers, we can also move from this pollution tolerant to pollution sensitive species. So there is a possibility, and as a, uh, as a fellow citizens, we don't have to uh, leave hope that you know our rivers are going to be like this only. So nothing much can be done. We don't have to have that hope. Uh, maybe soon we will restore our rivers to a clean water condition. That's what I want to emphasize this here. So Karthik Snehal, two very good yes. questions. One yes. is Athansh, right Snehal? Yes. Your course is very Go ahead. Yes, yes. So Athansh had a question. Um, he says, how do we different, like how do you identify which is a tolerant and which is a sensitive diet? Okay. So uh, we have a... Um, general database of diatoms, which is observed from uh, uh, diatom studies are very well done in Europe and in, in, in North America and these places. So there is a database and this database says these are the list of species, they, these are their preferred condition. And then that will be applicable only to cosmopolitan diatom, the diatom which is living everywhere in Europe, in, in India, in, in, in other parts of the world. In India, we have endemic diatoms. Endemic means they are related to only particular geographic location. For example, many plants are endemic to Western Ghats. So they grow only in Western Ghats, nowhere else. So for that kind of diatom, when we collect diatom sample, we also collect water samples and we assess the water condition. And then we do this assessment multiple times to confirm that this particular group of diatoms are living only in this set of environment. So like that, we confirm what are their environmental preferences. So when we collect diatom, we will also try to identify their environmental preference. So, and then we, based on their uh, population, so and then their frequent occurrence, so we'll come to a conclusion. These are pollution tolerant diatom, these are pollution sensitive diatom. This database we have developed over the last 10 years. So for different region and different water condition. Okay. So another question that has come up in the chat window is can a tolerant diatom convert into a sensitive one? So now imagine like, you know, there are a uh, clean uh, river is there. For some reason we are polluting that uh, river. So all the clean water diatom cannot thrive there. So basically they will die, they will die. And then that empty space, that empty habitat will be uh, occupied by the pollution tolerant diatoms. So only the environmental changes according to the environment, the uh, diatom, uh, the, the different set of diatoms comes in. But the Vice same was, diatom cannot change from tolerant to sensitive. They are different species. Change. Oh. Very good. Yeah. Very good, Vihan. Good how question. a new diatom come to how how a new diatom come to place? Because many insects bring diatom, birds bring diatoms, and some diatoms are also transported by air. Okay. So uh, they, Ala asks a question: Can a diatom population die out? Is there something called endangered diatoms or extinct diatoms? Can this happen? It, it can happen. Uh, since our uh, knowledge of extinct endangered usually come from higher animals and higher plants because we see tiger and suddenly there is a less number of tigers, so we declare it as endangered. But in terms of diatoms, we don't even have a baseline information. What are the commonly occurring diatoms? What are rarely occurring diatoms? So we are yet to reach that stage of coming to a conclusion whether it is a uh, endangered or, uh, or threatened diatom. However, uh, there is a one small case I wish to put. We found uh, this cast plateau 
is very common for people in and around pune so many goes there to uh, enjoy the beauty of uh, flowers in during the august and september we found uh, some diatom which are occurring only in kas plateau so we surveyed different plateaus all around the western ghats and we found some diatoms are occurring only in kas plateau so these diatoms uh, are uh, for whatever reason we are yet to con- find out what is the reason that they are not occurring in anywhere else even the similar uh, plateau structure is there similar pools or water pools are there but still those uh, those diatoms are not living there so now uh, if some have so if we destroy the habitat so we also destroy the, the those diatoms so we threat we pose a great threat to the diatoms so the eventually diatoms also die so these are the large scale uh, actions can uh, cause damage to the diatom habitat so habitat get extinct so does the diatoms Oh, very nice, Karthik. Okay, we can go ahead. Sure. Very interesting explanation. Yes. So uh, there was a question that you know uh, how diatoms are related to my day-to-day life. So if it was a live session, if you are uh, if you are you know gathered in a classroom or something, what I usually ask people to do is to take four time. Uh, deep breath so okay, we can do it you can do it like yeah. you know you can take uh, one hmm two three so uh, fourth time uh, we in all this time we took oxygen in and we released co2 uh, carbon dioxide right so all these plants they take carbon dioxide in and give the oxygen likewise diatoms are also microscopic plant they also take the carbon dioxide and release it we took four breath right the last breath that oxygen we we inhaled that comes exclusively from diatoms so because diatom make one fourth of global oxygen i i repeat diatom make one fourth of global oxygen the 25 percentage of oxygen on the atmosphere made by diatoms so this is the Even function of like diatoms you know, guys diatoms yeah. help us yeah. breathe they help us stay alive let's just say that yeah. <laughs> exactly so we should take a diatom picture and have in my wall and every day we need to put flowers and pray <laughs> because they are giving <laughs> us life Yes, absolutely true. This is Project Diatoms. Yes, yeah. Janvi makes a beautiful point. They are really underrated. Yeah, they are really underrated. underrated. They are underrated. firstly, I mean, they are gorgeous. So I don't know how they haven't been discovered yet. Secondly, they 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 use silica in their cell wall, which is so unique. And then they help us breathe. I mean, I don't know. It can't get better than this. Diatoms are like the friend you always wanted. Yeah. <laughs> be suddenly like you know i never see that but how they are making so much uh, uh, oxygen so there are hans has a good question uh, yeah. athans is like you know like we say trees are important they help us uh, in so many ways and we should plant more trees so is there a way we can plant and grow more diatom exactly exactly so this uh, one one very common means i i, I should have that i put the mean here so it's like you know all the credit goes to one person like you know there is no credit to the other person like usually we tell that uh, plant uh, make more uh, oxygen <clears throat> but um, the contribution of diatom itself is more than all the tropical plants put together whatever the oxygen we get from tropical plants uh, so the oxygen produced by diatoms is more than that so uh, why how come we get so much uh, oxygen from diatom because we know our earth is mostly by uh, marine environment and our marine environment is dominated by different levels of waters are dominated by uh, diatoms the planktonic diatoms in the marine environment so they make all this uh, 
oxygen uh, production and instead of uh, making uh, uh, now we are uh, telling that you know plant trees to get oxygen uh, we can continue doing that but in terms of uh, <clears throat> for uh, carbon sequestration or like oxygen production to to consume the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and then to produce more oxygen we can also maintain the whatever the lakes and ponds and rivers we have that will do the job okay wonderful so we, don't, we don't have to make a new if possible we can always make a new ponds new lakes i don't know how that is possible in this uh, where we are running out of land and things like that but uh, whatever the lakes and small small ponds we have in and around us uh, as a community we can protect them we can you know keep it clean so there is a you know a huge lot of diatoms growing there and then so we get lot of oxygen there okay we can move on yeah we'll come to that question yeah. later we'll come in shortly huh yeah so <clears throat> and then uh, that am also drive uh, global research so every scientist dream is to you know to get a nobel prize right so uh, this all this money for this nobel foundation came from that am you will not believe if i say this like uh, so all the, in the marine environment all the dead that ams they settle they, they makes this you know mountains of that Um, silica cell. When we look in the microscope, they look like this. So they are called diatomaceous earth. So this diatomaceous earth was used by dynamite, uh, which is an um, explosive for uh, breaking rocks and like construction purpose. But you know they sold this in lot and then they earn lot of money. And then they invested all this money in, in uh, making the Nobel uh, Foundation. which gives a uh, price to uh, yes yes so i diatomaceous earth now i'm putting it together so it's basically diatoms that make that diatomaceous earth yeah diatomaceous so the we have yeah. as a good Dead question diatoms. here kartik how much percentage of the earth is diatoms now we are talking of diatomaceous earth how much percentage of the earth is diatoms huh. what does it contribute so that quantification is uh i don't know how much percentage of earth is uh, that i don't know but uh, what happened like uh, in the marine waters in the oceans there are different layers of um, from top layer to bottom so they are extremely productive mm. so that's why they make so much uh, contribution in terms of uh, oxygen production or uh, digesting the carbon dioxide Okay, maybe we can move on, Karthik. We it's six, but we'll take a few more questions later. Yeah. Sure. So, uh, other than this, uh, uh, whatever the uh, omega three fatty acid which we take as like fish oil, it's not made by fish. Fish eat that. Uh, it gets stored in the fish. So, remember, it comes from a different group of algae, but majorly all diatoms are the one of the uh, high producer omega three fatty acids. and even there are research going on to make uh, biofuel from diatoms like petrol diesel and so on and there are a lot of technologies developed bio inspired technology developed from diatoms in terms of uh, um, delivery of uh, drug and then many nano structures and these uh, structures are also made by uh, diet inspired from diatoms these are some of the very commonly used uh, Uh, item uh, technology for uh, i think i uh, most of the pictures what i showed here all come from the hard work of our uh, lab members our students and you please if you are a student you are located in me, when the situation you are always welcome to come to our institute and observe the items and thank all the funding agent for the research support and thanks again to t for hosting me here and i conclude this talk with this statement if you can read thank your teacher if you can breathe thank items